I've always preferred wired mice to wireless ones. You don't have to worry about charging them or about connectivity issues and latency. But sometimes, this darn wire... Oh, that was easy. This is the Logitech MX Master 4, the successor to the MX Master 3. And if you haven't heard of it, it's a premium productivity mouse, so it's geared towards people who use a PC for work. Think editors, designers, and software engineers, as opposed to a gaming mouse, which is, well, geared more towards gamers. The build quality is very nice. Most of the mouse is made of plastic, but both of the scroll wheels are made of aluminum. And you've got a little bit of soft rubber on both sides, just to give your thumb and pinky a little bit more comfort. But why do you need a specific mouse for work? Well, this has eight buttons, all of which are customizable with the exception of the left and right click, which are set to their usual default functions. You also get two scroll wheels, an amazing vertical one, more on that later, and an additional horizontal one, which is also customizable. This also has the action rings feature, which allows you to pop up a set of actions or shortcuts in this ring for easy use. There's also this gesture button, which you can press and move your mouse in any direction for additional shortcuts. All these features are customizable and you can have different profiles for different apps. So you could have one for your web browser and one for your video editor and for basically any app that you use in order to create the most efficient layout for different use cases. In addition to all these customizable buttons, a new feature with this mouse is the haptic feedback. You're able to configure when this is triggered and how intense it is. So if you're switching between screens, using the gestures or using the action ring, you'll get that feedback. And it even triggers for low battery notifications. You mainly feel it on this thumb rest button, but even if your thumb is off for some reason, you'll still feel it a little bit in your palm. Haptic feedback is a great addition in my opinion, especially in a time where everything is going digital. There are also smart actions that you configure, and these perform a chain of events that you often do, such as fetching and merging a git branch into your feature branch or changing the speed of a clip to half or double speed. It's really up to you to decide what's best for you, but the possibilities are endless, and these smart actions can be bound to the gestures and to the action ring. Now, more on that amazing scroll wheel. To some, it might just be a scroll wheel, but to me, it's what takes this from a Toyota Prius to a Lucid Air. It's made out of aluminum, so it has a premium and durable feel to it, and it has very nice detents to it for precise line-by-line -line scrolling. But that's not all. It actually has two modes, and you can press this button on top to swap it from precise line-by-line -line scrolling to smooth, fast scrolling. And on top of that, there's a smart shift mode that allows you to have the line-by-line -line scrolling at slow speeds and a smooth scrolling at faster speeds, so you get the best of both worlds. Oh, and the reason I feel so deeply about the scroll wheel is because before this, I was using a Corsair M65 Elite gaming mouse, which I loved, but my main issue with it was that the scroll wheel wasn't that reliable. After one too many times opening it to clean the wheel, I eventually got tired of it and I just bound the scroll functions to the DPI buttons. So now having a mouse that has so much thought put into just the scroll wheel is very special to me. Even though this is a productivity mouse, some people do do work and game on the same setup. So how well does it work for that? Well, first of all, it is heavy, weighing out exactly 150 grams compared to my Corsair gaming mouse, which weighs 97 grams with all the weights removed. I kind of thought super light mice were overhyped until I got this. I do like that it has a lot of buttons and there's so much customizability. Like with the gestures, you could even bind certain comms or abilities to them. I played a few games of Overwatch and it worked for games, but it wasn't super comfortable because of the weight and because it has such a high profile, so it kind of felt tiring after a bit. The side buttons could be a tad bit bigger. I kept mispressing them at first because I was so used to my old layout, but maybe with time I'll get used to this. And if not, maybe I'll get a wireless M65 Elite for gaming. But yeah, I think it'll be okay for short gaming sessions here and there, but if you're doing longer gaming sessions, it's super easy to swap wireless mice, so I think it's worth getting a second dedicated mouse for gaming. Now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, and the first one is very obvious. It's that you have a lot of inputs. You have the eight buttons and two wheels to be exact. So you're able to keep your hand on your mouse and do a lot more there for a more efficient workflow. It also has the gestures, smart actions, and action ring. So you have more additional inputs and shortcuts as well. It also comes with this tiny USB-C receiver, which is the first one I've ever seen before. And it's great because most laptops now come with USB-C and you can use it directly with a smartphone or a tablet without the need to pair it over Bluetooth or use a USB-A to USB-C dongle. Oh, and again, that haptic feedback is really, really nice to have in a world being dominated by capacitive buttons. And of course, you have the ability to customize all these buttons and sensitivities in the Logitech Options app. Now for the cons. Well, you need to install the Options Plus app in order to get the full use out of the mouse. It has no onboard memory, so even after customizing it, you still need to keep the app installed in, 
order to have all your profiles set up. Oh, and for some reason, after my first time installing the app, the action rings didn't work. Even after restarting the software and restarting my computer, it still didn't work. So I had to uninstall and reinstall the options app in order for it to work. Oh, and this might just be me, but the left click and right click are silent and it is obviously just preference. So it could be a pro to some people, but I prefer to hear a click because it is some form of feedback. Yeah. In conclusion, it's a great and efficient mouse for work. It feels very solid and premium and you have so many buttons and shortcuts and can have separate profiles for different apps. It's kind of heavy, so it's not the best for gaming, but it is a productivity mouse after all. So if you only game for short sessions, I think it should be okay for that. And that's all. See you next time. Drop test in three, two, one.